Potter's Journal, April, no, it is now May 2019, um, on the Potter's Wheel, I'm going to be making some batter bowls with handles. I've always done them just as a bowl with a spout, but a special request for the handle. Um, and uh, yeah, I used to have trouble with special requests, but if you can make it, <laughs> hopefully they're sold. Uh, I started by looking at the Pyrex, since that's what everybody's used to. Um, you know, uh, drawing some similarities, and uh, but uh, you know, going a, a different way completely. Um, we are also going to be putting these to the pour test. I've still got a pumpkin left from uh, the last winter, and we'll do some pumpkin pancakes and see how the spouts work. Um, we'll see how this went, but I still have to finish them and get them glazed, so this might take in a couple videos. Let's stir the batter. Let's see what we can come up with design-wise here on this special order batter bowl. The two and a half pounds of clay, if this is too much, or I'm sorry, no, two pounds of clay, if this is too much, I can take some off on the next batch, or on the next one that, um, I once tried adding a little bit, after wedging the clay, adding a little bit on to the wedged clay, and it was not wedged in beautifully like the first batch, and I had trouble throwing it, so, um, <laughs> the wedging clay, it really is, um, something to do, it's, um, not just talk. that it's going to line all the clay particles and make throwing easier. Okay, still a little bit thick, but that's good. It lets me come back in and compact this a little bit and um, compact that needle mark out because occasionally the needle marks um, open up for me, it seems like, in the firing and in the glaze firing. I've not heard anybody else um, mention, you know, that uh, happening. But, um, I've noticed it myself. Okay, so using this Pyrex bowl as a guide, this is relatively easy. Uh, should be thing to make, um, you know, a low, wide cylinder. Um, something anybody should be able to attempt. And I'm using a very thin sponge. Um, I've been going back and forth between using it and not using it. That um, it's actually, yeah, to the point of de uh, deteriorating. That um, the very thin sponge allows you to feel what's happening. Um, Simon Leach has been getting on spongers, but his father, David Leach, even explained how to take. Um, a thick sponge and shave it down uh, so that you could do just yeah what I'm doing um, get a feel for the clay through the sponge and um, yeah the inside of this um, it should be relatively smooth because this is for using it is a batter bowl that um, we want to be able to use it and have it come out clean um, when it's poured, or if you take a spatula to it to get the last bits of batter out, it shouldn't get caught up in the throw ribs. Okay, so that's relatively the form of the Pyrex, but I seem to want to do something else. We do need to... Okay, get a little bit of excess clay off the bottom. And give that an undercut. Okay, round that off. And maybe we will give this a slight um, rounding off and bulging outwards. Okay, I'm leaving a fairly thick 
rim on the top. Um, I've never um, never done a rolled rim, but um, usually just leave a bit up there. Okay, smooth and round that off. And that's um, yeah. You know, I am I am going to stir the batter, and we will evolve this from here in the next. Um, Maybe I'll do uh, five or half a dozen of these, um, a bit more than the special order. Okay, so we will come back and decorate this, and the rest of them put spouts and handles on. Okay, but first we'll stir the batter with the design part. I'm sorry, I can't feed you every day, but we need to test out some of these batter bowls, see how they work, and if they do the job. The only advantage I can think that the Pyrexes has, but it, it does have the measurements on it. But this is pancakes. Do you really need measurements? I mean, you start with an egg. And add a bit of water. Um, I'm going to say just over a half a cup, and then we'll figure out what we needed in the end by seeing what's left. Okay, and you probably should use buttermilk or milk, but I never have either, so I found out that um, a bit of yogurt um, will uh, perform some magic on it. And the defining ingredient again, the pumpkin. Okay, a big gallop of it, and then maybe a little bit more. I did add some food coloring to that, so if your pumpkin or squash wasn't uh, quite as yellow, that's why. Okay, so we will start with um, about three quarters of a cup of flour and then maybe a quarter cup of whole wheat flour. And then at the end we will either add more water or flour as needed. Um, okay, so about a uh, teaspoon of the leavening, all-purpose baking powder. Okay, double acting. And um, just a bit of salt, maybe about an eighth, I'd say, of salt. And, okay, my fellow travelers, my mother and sister Amy just got back from Mexico. They visited the Chocolate Museum again, um, like we saw in Nicaragua, Costa Rica. Um, so this is the good stuff on the cinnamon. We'll use a teaspoon, but this is the good stuff. Okay, and I couldn't join them this time. I'm still saving up um, some allspice. Um, I'm going to say teaspoon there, too. Um, it's not as old as the vintage package looks. I've refilled it. And some nutmeg, too. There's not much there. I've added cinnamon as well. Uh, and then, okay, you should sift this together. And, you know, okay, this is a test. Um, um, and you know what, uh, the only other thing is, often the butter, a little bit of butter, we are going to have to, okay, I'm going to use olive oil here. I am going to have to make some olive oil pourers. That thing is way too big to handle, so I'll say stop back for that video. And, and maybe the slides from... Uh, the, my, uh, their Mexico travel too. Okay, I am going to say this is a test and this is two bowls designed um, two different ways. One flared out like that, um, um, yeah, trumpeted out, and one bulbed out like that. Um, the second one here holds more liquid. So um, where I was planning on dumping this on top, I think we need the bigger bowl, so we are going to dump this in here. And, okay, so it does pour. <laughs> okay, we passed that bit of the test. And I don't see a drip. Actually, the Pyrex bowl that I've used in the past um, has always dripped for me. Okay, and this is where I believe you probably are supposed to fold this in. But um, I'm not a good folder. But uh, you don't want to overmix it either, so we don't want to do that. Okay, and a little bit more water. Okay, and yeah, double acting baking powder. We will let this sit a minute. Um, go and do something out in the studio. 
and okay put these batter bowls to the next test part of the test okay now let's add the butter okay this one we will just put the wavy lines in to catch the glaze I'll pick a glaze that'll pull in there so we will add butter and syrup jam and yogurt okay on this one we will use a white slip and I'm keeping this low so that we can put a spout on there and not uh, the slip won't get in the way um, we will just use okay a classic wavy pattern in there okay and maybe we'll do the slip thing again call it, maybe we'll just call it my cloud pattern. And once the slip gets caught up on the rib, we can then take the pattern down below the slip line and smear some of it on down there and pull it up into the above. Okay, and you know what, sometimes uh, that also pushes in the side of the pot, so we'll take the rib on the inside and round it out again. Sorry, I can't feed you every week. Do subscribe and stop back to see if I can get these finished glazed and sold. I'm really busy with my greenhouse and nursery business right now. Uh, this is the dogwoods. They always bloom here beautifully every year. It was my grandmother's favorite tree and now mine.